So this is a rain gauge, and if you're a fan of my channel, uh, several videos ago I created a nice little stand for it, so I mounted it outside. It has one interesting flaw. Yeah, when it rains, it stops working because it's, uh, believe it or not, uh, not waterproof. Uh, in this video here, we're going to tear it apart. It's actually a fairly interesting device, and we're going to repair it. So it's kind of a neat mechanism. Uh, when you take the top off, there's, uh, it looks like two buckets, and they oscillate back and forth. And then right here, there's a, a little magnet that seems to go past this post. And I suspect on the other side, coming up on the other assembly, is a Hall Effect sensor. So the water comes into a bucket and tips it. And then, of course, if it gets uh, water on the other side, eventually tips back. In fact, actually, we can show that quite easily. Um, this is the top of the assembly. It's basically a funnel, and it creates sort of a laminar flow. And if you put some water into it, and it'll flow out... You can see it tips back and forth, and I guess it sort of measures uh, in increments. So we're looking at those little tipping buckets going back and forth. I'd speculate it was a Hall effect sensor, but now that I've studied the end here that goes next to that little magnet as it tips back and forth, uh, it's actually, it looks like a, a little reed relay. Um, a simple device, it basically is a magnetic uh, field passes by it. It causes those two little uh, contacts to... Uh, a touch and uh, of course very easy then to sense that signal okay this is the main circuit board uh, on the center here is almost certainly a microcontroller microprocessor of some sort associated with a little 32 kilohertz crystal it basically seems to have one function uh, these little tipping buckets cause a signal here on k1 and this processor can sense it of course and then uh, it then can send out that count information on some sort of encoded binary packet uh, to the RF section over here. Um, there is a little SMT part here. It's not marked in a way that I can find a data sheet for it. I, of course, I'm reluctant to tear the assembly down to the silicon level. I'm hoping to put this back into service, but there's this 26.2982 megahertz crystal associated with it. If you multiply that by 16, you get that at 400 megahertz band. And, uh, and then it comes up with a smattering of uh, discrete components out to a little antenna. It's basically just a crude little chunk of wire. Uh, and off it goes. So a model of simplicity in terms of its uh, design. Uh, unfortunately, it's a fairly fragile device. These are high Q circuits here uh, and here. And when it seems to get contaminated with water, it stops working. I got this board to re-work re, uh, by taking this part off uh, with a hot air rework tool. I cleaned it up very carefully, then reassembled it. If you actually zoom in here, just before I actually did that resoldering, you can see that there is um, some some goo around it. Um, that was also part of an unsuccessful experiment. I tried to lacquer the board and see if that would keep it waterproof. Unfortunately, it causes this circuit to shift off so much that uh, the product stops working, so I had to strip that uh, down. Um, and so this board, although it, it is conceptually very easy to understand, it's very sensitive to environmental contamination. Okay, well, I'm just going to put the uh, assembly into an RF chamber here and close the door so we can sense what the uh, frequency being transmitted by this is. I have a little RF amplifier on the back here going up to my spectrum analyzer, and this allows me to figure out what band it's on. When I got the product, it wasn't really advertising any sort of uh, indication of what band it, tra it transmits on, so I have to do a bit of searching first before we can uh, sort down the protocol. Okay, so I got it in clear right A, then I'll uh, just uh, put it into max hold A, and just go into the chamber here and uh, see if I can adjust the battery, get it to snap in or not, and see if any peaks show up. Okay, so there's a peak there. Uh, let's go to peak search. Uh, let's see, 444 megahertz. Yes, that, that's a pretty common uh, intro ISM band, I think they call it. And uh, likely that that is where uh, the frequency of interest is. Let's zoom into that 444 and see if we can see a bit more. Okay, let's keep on trying to see if we can capture things. I'll just uh, take the battery out and put it back in. And I think the device tries to communicate as soon as you do that. Uh, it just sends a small burst of information, so it's actually fairly uh, tricky to capture it all. I'll do a max hold A here and see if we can get it to wake up and uh, spit out a bit of information. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Cool. The sound of only one burst. Uh, I think this is very similar to the uh, RF switch we tore down two videos again ago. Something called frequency shift keying. Basically, just turns on or turns off this modulated 430-ish megahertz 
and encodes a, a pattern. Uh, the reason why it's dropping down here, it's not perfectly uh, symmetrical without, is that the symbol rate's quite low and only probably sounds with a very small burst. This thing can run, I suspect, for probably at least months and hopefully a year, years in the AA battery, so it really tries to conserve RF energy. So, yeah, really a cla another, yet another classic uh, RF design going on here. So the failures obviously of just uh, not uh, sealing this container very well. Uh, it's absolutely wet. Uh, their electronics here are soaked and I imagine if I dry them off it'll uh, probably start working again. Okay, in terms of sealing the case, I think I'm just going to try caulking it with some silicone. you got to be careful in the silicone you use. Uh, you want to look for the one that's meant for aquariums. Uh, some silicones will outgas acetic acid, which of course would corrode electronics. But I'm going to try sealing the case on the mounting points at the top here and also sealing it around this uh, portion here. Let's see if we can keep the water out of the assembly. So kind of defense, is it defense in depth here, see if this uh, causes the assembly to become more reliable. Well, there we go. Uh, reasonable electronics, but uh, really let down by some very poor mechanical considerations, uh, especially given its primary purpose. Um, I must say it's quite surprising sometimes the stuff that you get off Amazon, AliExpress, and how just how poorly designed it is. No matter. Uh, let's see if uh, hopefully this, uh, a little bit of silicone will make this a little more reliable. If you like this video, I'd certainly appreciate a thumbs up, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.